Just before I left Malaysia, my cousin took me out to Genting, Genting Highlands. And uh, that's my mom and dad. <clears throat> and uh, these are some of my classmates. In the class of 20, we have two black women and one Caucasian. And the rest were from Malaysia. All of us were from Malaysia, so it was like home from home. <laughs> Even I only have a one-way ticket. <clears throat> this was, uh, I think, was my second year in the ward, and this was when I was doing casualty. And this is my first lady patient who had a her leg amputated, and that is behind the nursing home, the the nurses' home with another of my classmates and this lady is my best friend until now hi auntie kim if you're watching <laughs> <laughs> um, were you scared or worried about leaving home did you come alone did you plan to come back and what sort of time scale were you thinking well i was so eager to leave <laughs> to, to look forward to this adventure that there was no time to be scared and uh, I only had a one-way ticket, so there is no coming back. Uh, did you come alone? Yeah, I was on my own. <laughs> but I met two, one other travelling companion when we were on the plane. Doing the same thing? Yeah, nursing, but she was going on to Somerset. How did your family feel? They've said good reasons. <laughs> no! <laughs> How did your family feel? Well, I think at that time, I wasn't very close to my family, to my mum and dad. To me, uh, I felt like an outsider because there were seven siblings and I was raised by my grandparents. So there was not much of a relationship there that was why i was eager to leave home and uh but since then since i've been and through letters correspondence i realized i found out that my mom was very worried about me and my uh, so was my dad both my parents i don't know some of these are forgotten what this this was my I think second year in the hospital and this is when I was doing my oh this is my group how did you find yourself trying to integrate into English culture was this met with any resistance um what aspect of English culture do you find easiest or hardest to adapt to I was very lucky because <clears throat> the training school that I had they tend to recruit uh, Malaysians, so there was a lot of Malaysians there and uh, it was just like a home from home and uh, we cook together, we eat together, we even have uh, celebrated Christmas and have our meal on the floor <laughs> <laughs> with chicken curry. Um, well, the culture, the English culture is the queuing up for everything that I find it very difficult because being Malaysian, we are very impatient in going from A to B. <laughs> but over here in those days, you have to queue up for everything, which is good in one <laughs> respect because it gives you discipline, but it was just so time consuming. Um, what else to say? <laughs> what about when you went to Oh yeah, I, I didn't have any um, count, uh, resistance until I went up to the ward and I met with uh, racist remark that we didn't know it was racist at that time. We thought it was a joke when people asked us whether we live on trees. <laughs> and uh, 
Oh, honestly, we just thought it was a joke, and people, you know, uh, didn't want us foreigners to attend to them, that sort of thing. Um, I think it's easy to ad adapt with the English culture is the bath, because in Malaysia we used to shower, and uh, with shower you wash away your dirty water, but <laughs> when you are in the bath, you stay in the bath and you wash yourself with the dirty water but it's very easy to adapt because it's so cold <laughs> <laughs> so you tend to stay in the hot bath the two english values curing and bath <laughs> <laughs> from penang but she is living in singapore now because her husband is singaporean and um this was the uh, hostel that we stay in that's you yeah, that's me. Uh, that is my best friend. She is in Singapore now. Uh, that is was her husband. He is not with us anymore. And this lady was my our mentor. She's one year above us. Sadly, she's no more longer with us. How long <laughs> did it take before it was really home? Yeah. If it is home for you, mm. or do you still feel your birth country is home, or both? What okay. do you miss? Well, it is never home for me here. Uh, my birth country is my home. And uh, um, that's where all my siblings are, although my sisters are all over the world. But my roots is in Malaysia. And um, what is the next question? Uh, what do you still, what do you miss? What I miss, yeah. I miss the food. Although, you know, all this oriental Asian cooking, uh, although all the supermarkets are catering for uh, Asian cooking, I still miss the food at home. Uh, the people, my family, that I miss most, especially as you get older, you you want to be near to your family uh, and the climate. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is hot in Malaysia, but it, nothing beats. As I find that living in England as I got older, the cold gets more penetrating. If you know, see what I mean, <laughs> you feel the cold more than when you were younger. So I long for a, a hot weather, I long for the, the weather in Malaysia. It's our, our Christmas uh, celebration, eating on the floor, Malaysian style. I <laughs> <coughs> uh, think that is it. Okay, right. Oh, this is when I was doing uh, Kashati. No. Kashati is my second year, I think. <coughs> Oh, you want this? <laughs> this was the because when we uh, used to work near the Tilbury docks, and we have the Malaysian ship docking at the at, at the dockyard, and we get invited to the party, and this is one of the, <laughs> the <Some nice party. laughs> We used to work late duty, and then straight away we got in the taxi and went to the docks to have a party all night, and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then went back to duty at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs>